today I uh, just want to show you basically what I ended up finding out. This is a 2013 Ford uh, F-150 and it's a no crank, no start situation. <clears throat> um, customer brought it to me, they uh, started looking at it thinking it was uh, like a PATS issue, a mobilizer. Um, possible BCM, but uh, they after any of those points or situations, they kind of stop and ask me to look at it. And it's actually been kind of uh, pretty involved. It's got a lot of time, uh, and then you know just checking over things and uh, checking possibilities, but. Uh, I'll kind of try to go through this in a manner that I ended up finding out and basically show you what I'm going to do on how to fix it uh, and it's only due to absolute time constraint. Uh, first day back after the new year, this customer's been down, uh, the owner of of the truck's been without it for a long time. I don't know how long it's been at the other shop. And with all the money and time they've put in it, sent it here, they're in dire need. Uh, I'm assuming a sale also is, uh, you know, could be, or the sale of this to the customer that had already purchased it could come into effect and stuff like that. And it's a, it's a good, uh, the shop is, it's a good, customer of mine I dealt with him a lot I'm gonna try and help him out and get him by with this uh, and um, even surprise myself that it's possible to fix it this way but let me get you a shot of how things went and we'll, we'll just go from there hey okay, first foremost I wanted to uh, get you a shot of uh, the initial trouble codes that the vehicle came in with or that I started once I got it and was messing with it and in particular these two um, PATS codes in the uh, BCM uh, the 10D9 uh, 10DA um, both these two were ones that I wanted to concentrate on and eliminate in order for it to presumably go ahead and crank and start and, and go from there. Um, so what I did was get a, well after looking over everything for that uh, wiring and, and keys and uh, the, the ring transceiver uh, or receiver, whatever you want to call it, where the ignition lock is. I checked all that, everything, and it led to uh, a uh, faulty BCM. Got a brand new one. Programmed it uh, and reset everything as needed. Reinitialized the you know keys or ran through the path procedure uh, and everything. And after that was done with the new BCM, and it's located down there on the right side kick panel, these codes went away. There wasn't any more uh, BCM or patch related codes. And so I thought, boom, okay, we're good, we're done. Go ahead, put the key in, crank it, start run, and uh, the customer get it back. But sure enough, it was not the case. Uh, it would you would go into crank position and nothing would happen. Uh, but still, like I said, any patch error message or and codes, nothing was there anymore. Uh, which then was really confusing. Um, and I started just checking everything I even had. A second uh, uh, 
person come in, try to look at it with me. Um, didn't get anywhere with that either. Got back on it and just started looking and looking. Um, and uh, just kind of go from there. But, um, maybe I'll get a shot. This, here's the key. <coughs> I'll show you what it does. There, and crank, and crank, and nothing. That's where I'm at. That's where I was at with it. <clears throat> and um, let me get you set up, and I'll get under the hood. Trying to go in the next stop that I ended up having to go in. Okay, so after all that, the BCM and Pat's codes being eliminated came in. Still wasn't cranking. Uh, so I came in here under the hood. Uh, decided to just blatantly check, do basic checks for maybe the starter is dead not working. And then voltage and everything is getting down to the starter wire and it's just not activating or kicking out um so i just i hooked up a meter down at the the starter which is on the passenger side uh the battery feed to it was good and then i checked on the uh the starter signal wire put in the crank and there was zero voltage nothing was being sent down to the starter so then i just started backtracking and the fuse it's got a it's got a starter relay it's got a fuse and then of course your PCM BCM and your wiring is all involved with that um, and the fuse was good it says 30 amp right here fuse 13 um, right there so that was good I the starter relay, which is the second one in, um, easy enough to swap over, same part numbers, swapped it, same thing, nothing, <clears throat> and then uh, what I then went to next was remove the starter relay and checking the inputs to it, and I will, uh, here, let me try to see if I can do this one handed without setting it. Uh, <clears throat> so there's background. Okay. Here's the, uh, Two big pins here on the on the right side, facing you know vertical. Uh, this one is from the fuse. This one goes to the starter, and this pin on the top and this pin on the bottom are your control side for the relay, and those two go. Both of them uh, lead to the uh, PCM, and so here is. Your fused power, and then right now there's gonna be nothing on these as long as I got the key off, which I think I do. So there's the top pin zero, there, there's the bottom pin zero again. Let me turn the key on. He's on session two. Now we got two shots of the two uh, PCM wires. Okay, here's that top one. 
and I'm in the the bottom one, and that's what I noticed the two and a half volts with just key on, uh, which then threw me for a loop. Obviously, I don't mess with too many of these, and not sure if that was just uh, or if that's what's supposed to be there or not with the relay removed maybe it's just on a bias voltage or um, if it just didn't seem correct with the key on to have uh, just two and a half voltage it might be what's supposed to be there or might not but in the crank position uh, it's supposed to do the provide you know your 12 volts or battery voltage for the control side of the relay to then send power to the starter and it does not do that I put a relay tester on there check the pins and nothing happened when you cycle which on either of these pins I can try to get you a shot of me cycling it Still hooked up. Position two, I'll go into crank. It drops out and comes back in. This key removed. Key on. Key in. And crank so none of that looked correct okay so picked up that phone call real quick and it actually happens to be this customer the uh, shop owner asking how it's going so I'm still um, right at the finishing stages like I said I don't know what the deal is between him and the actual owner but there seems to be big big uh, time constraint so I told him um, pretty much there at the end do a few more things get it wrapped up as long as it's 100% to the point where it's operating he can have it back this is what we're gonna do so again uh, just to continue on with explaining and go ahead and doing the uh, modification to fix it two and a half volts at the control side and doing basically nothing not providing 12 volts and it uh, checked both pins PCM other pin does not do anything this one does the whole two and a half go to crank goes away drops out blah 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 so I spent quite a bit of time looking at the diagram trying to research uh, checking all of the power supplies to the PCM checking uh, there's another uh, start run relay that also comes into play supposed to feed voltages to the PCM controlled by the BCM thinking uh, I was thinking that was possibly a situation going on but I checked the operation of that um, that is working properly the power feeds to the PCM are good your grounds and stuff are good the PCM and it's not a harness issue, you're not going to get your 100% exact 2.55 change, whatever, all the time uh, that consistent if it was like a harness or a intermittent thing. This is a constant uh, faulty voltage situation that's going uh, and nothing going on in the crank position. There's no power ground basically on that control side. Again, I'm saying it's 2.5 voltage being quote unquote incorrect uh, I'm not one million percent if others I don't have another one here to compare one to see if a two and a half voltage should be there on key on and then switch to 12 volts or ground once you go and crank and then 12 volts being provided on the other side um, I'm just saying like it could be a possibility that's how it's set up but once you go and crank uh, and seize crank from ignition switch 
that that voltage would, would drop out or work properly. What I'm seeing and what I'm saying is there's nothing enough here to control that relay or switching over to control that relay. Um, obviously, once everything is checked, you go over and you say you determine PCM's bad, faulty, needs replaced, program, patch, all over again, all of that. Um, obviously, you don't have time for that, sourcing one out, getting one, programming it, all that. I sat down, looked at the diagram, and think that I could come up with a bypass for the relay or a manipulation type of situation. I've done some of these things in the past, and it's, it all depends. It's vehicle by vehicle, um, and that's what we're going for. Um, uh, it's not the way to fix it. It's it's not the replacement of PCM. Eventually, possibly, PCM is still going to need to be replaced. But what we're going to do here is kind of manipulate and don't want to say bypass, but um, we're just going to fix up in a way where it will work in a almost proper way with inputs and everything. Um, so, let me see. One way that I decided we could do this is I wanted, when I was checking the actual starter, Um, by jumping the relay terminals and the start did click or I mean did kick out and turn over so we knew that was good keys in the uh, on position and what I did was jump these terminals which I will do to show you One. Let's make sure everything's clear. Obviously, with all the pads, things being initialized and and aligned and configured, you can go ahead and basically jump the relay terminals for the starter and you'll get your ignition your fuel and ignition and everything um, it's just not controlling the starter relay so that's what gave me the idea to figure out and see if I can do a bypass and I'm pretty sure that I can after looking at the diagram and seeing that it'll work this way so let me shut this down and get you set up for that I got the truck still running, haven't shut it off yet, after I jumped it with the uh, jumper wire. And I just re-scanned it, uh, all modules, full full uh, scan. And even with having the key on in the on position and jumping the relay terminals, there are no uh, PCM and... and uh, not even in body module, any faults related to anything regards to jumping the starter relay. That was another reason where I thought of that this is uh, probably something I could bypass. If, it, if I jumped it and nothing acted weird, no lights, no codes, then I was going to try and see if I can figure out if there is a bypass possibility. Uh, so, again, before I move on to that, just wanted to show you uh, and scan that no codes come up, everything works normal and proper as if it was a fully functional factory setup. So I'm at the PCM connector which uh, houses uh, the three pins that I'm concerned with. It's this wire, this wire, 
and then this wire that I stripped this section out. These, the this yellow and this uh, white with green are your two wires for your uh, rel starter relay control, with power and ground, whichever one is which. Um, that's these two controlled by PCM. Uh, I cut them, and they they'll lead through you know the harness to the relay. Um, I also just to double check, just tapped in here. Now this is straight from the PCM, so you're you're avoiding any shorts or anything in the harness. As far as why we would be seeing that two and a half volts. Keys on. <clears throat> and there you go. You're fixed two and a half coming straight from or out of PCM. So, another determining factor there. Uh, next, I've got uh, <clears throat> this black and red lead, they are on the other end of these two wires, the relay control. And just to show you, key is still on, and then by providing power and ground, and it would help if the relay was back in, we will be acting as if we were the computer. Again, works normal, activates, kicks out, and no trouble code. Okay, so that was the first uh, step with the jumper leads show you that that would work the next thing and the way that I'm gonna have it fixed up as this third wire that I mentioned blue and white it is a uh, your start signal from the ignition switch now it's not a high amperage it's not a big load carrying uh, it's more of just a, a signal uh, letting the PCM and this also goes to BCM uh, Letting both know that you are in the start crank position ignition switch wise And <clears throat> I still have got One my both leads hooked up to the relay control out there One on the ground and this one Tap into ignition switch start position signal wire. Key is off right now. And there you go. Well, that's how I am going to uh, bypass the computer controlling the starter relay. I will be using the ignition switch starter signal feed to the PCM to also feed 
the control side on the relay for the starter to kick it out and activate. Uh, I checked the uh, resistance, did some Ohm's law, and with on that relay, it's only gonna draw. It's gonna draw less than an amp. Uh, it was like it was point. It was point one four or point oh one four. I can't remember uh, exactly, but it was somewhere in that range. So I wasn't too concerned with the amount of uh, quick amperage that will be drawn by the one relay on that one signal wire. Uh, that actually comes directly from the ignition switch, which that switch uh, has uh, a higher, I don't, I don't know, if it was a 20 amp, 50 amp uh, fuse directly on that ignition switch wire. So I'm not too concerned. Everything should be still safe. Now, as far as what the BCM, PCM need to see is just is not any amperage or anything, just voltage change uh, on those uh, inputs of both modules is all they need to see which that's still going to be there uh, and all we're doing is drawing a little bit of amperage off that same signal to uh, activate that relay just for a few seconds uh, everything is going to be good and okay and at least drivable right now to get it back to the customer and let them figure out what they want to do uh, with with whatever situation is going there uh, again I don't know 100% what happened with the vehicle the way I got it was steering column everything was taken apart uh, BCM like I said uh, for some reason was in, in throwing path codes or whether that got messed up or whether it was a different one, a different used one, I don't know. I got an original one, put it in, programmed it, patch code, got everything worked, you know, cleared, um, programmed correctly, initialized, calibrated, patch, whatever you want to call it, and then running into this situation. Uh, but maybe someone who's stuck in a jam. Can use this as a learning experience uh, or a, a way for themselves to bypass it. I don't recommend it 100%. Obviously, the right fix would be to replace the PCM. Uh, the jamming situation I'm in right now, because of trying to help out someone else and this being thrown in my lap, is that this is how I'm going to rectify it. Um, saying it's still safe everything's gonna work fun and proper um, and I feel okay letting it go it's gonna work it's gonna be fine so if, if, if someone ever has a, a no crank no star situation and you for some reason have no relay control you can go ahead and, and uh, do this uh, same fix here. Keep in mind, this will only work if your PATS system is uh, properly, you know, aligned, initialized, calibrated, in sync, whatever terminology you want to use. If the and and if you have good keys, you have to have good two working keys at least when you do programming. But if you have one key and the one key is dead, that's all just that's all PATS related. It's not going to be. A bypass issue. All this would not work. This bypass would not work if Pat was not in a correct state, in the enable state. So the, the BCM has to be synced with the PCM. PCM, both of those two have to uh, be in sync with the, a proper program key. The the ignition key ring, the transponder receiver, that has to be uh, working and reading the keys. So. All that has to be in line and working in order for this bypass to work if it's simply just a relay control issue. There's the connector where we made the uh, wire repairs. Uh, grounded it right there. Take it all back up, put the cover on, and 
it's running, starting normal. So that's that. And I'll be returning it to the customer. And it's definitely an interesting one, but uh, that's all we could do right now with the time frame and uh, situation. But interesting one that you are able to uh, bypass at least the starter relay. Uh, on a Ford uh, with PATS. As long as PATS is working correctly, uh, it's doable. So, hope you enjoyed and help maybe possibly that it helps uh, some of you guys out there if you run into a similar situation. Maybe you never won't. Maybe it's one of a kind. Who knows? Not ever seen it, but uh, at least figured out a way to get it running. So. Alright.